It's great to have you here this morning. If you'll open up your Bibles to uh, Acts chapter 2. It's uh, not only good to have you here in the main sanctuary, but it's great to have those people that are worshiping in our engaged service and those people that are watching uh, online today. Uh, you're an important part of our church family. So glad to have you as a part of what uh, we're doing. Next Sunday, I start a two-week sermon series, just two weeks on Joseph. And here's the question I'm gonna ask. Have you, ever, have you ever wondered why bad things happen to good people? Anybody ever asked that question before? Five of us? Come on, anybody? Why in the world do bad, does bad things happen to good people? And that's, that's the question I wanna be asking for the next two weeks, and I hope you'll come back next Sunday, and for the next two weeks, we're gonna be talking about that subject. If I were to ask you what's the most important uh, uh, event on the Christian calendar, you would obviously shout out back to me, it's... Easter, thank you very much. And, and, and we, res, you know, we uh, 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 celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power that he has and the power that's in our lives. That's so important. So that's the most important one. If I were to say to you, okay, what's the second most important uh, event on the Christian calendar, the second most important date that we celebrate as Christians, it would be? Christmas, very good, thank you very much. So you got Easter, you got Christmas, when Jesus Christ came to earth. But there's a third most important date on the Christian calendar, and I'm not sure if you know this, but today is the day that we celebrate it. Some of you go, well, I didn't know today was a big celebration day. Well, it is, and, and I hope you know this. Today is a day of celebration. It's the day, I heard somebody say, it's the day of Pentecost. Pentecost literally means 50. It's 50 days after Easter, and it's the day that we celebrate in the church as the start, Pentecost is the start of the church. And so we celebrate that. That's when the church was born. It's the church's birthday. And so after church today, we're all gonna have German chocolate cake. Isn't that what everybody does on, on birthdays? You celebrate? Mary, did you bring the uh, German chocolate cake for a thousand people today? No, you didn't. Okay, well maybe next, uh, next, next year we'll do that with that. Okay, Mary, sorry. Today's the church's birthday. Two weeks ago, I started a sermon, and I told you back then, I said, listen, it's one sermon, but I'm gonna divide it in half. It was gonna take a couple hours, and we made this deal that you would come back, which thank you so much for coming back today. You said, I'll come back if you divide it in half. And so we did half two weeks ago. We're gonna finish it today. And I wanna talk to you on the church that God blesses. I wanna go to Acts chapter two, and if you have your sermon notes, a half sheet of paper, if you're watching the engaged service, you can just raise your hand, and they'll bring you the notes, or if you have a smartphone or an iPad or some smart uh, device, then you can actually uh, download a, uh, an app called YouVersion, and all of the notes and all of the verses we put on there, we, we, we load them up every week. If you just go to YouVersion, that app, and then go to OVCN, then all of our notes are on there, and that's kind of a cool thing as well. I, I wanna talk, if you have your notes, you kinda see it, uh, I, I wanna give you eight things in order to receive God's blessing on your life, and you want God's blessing on your life, amen? amen? If you want God's blessing on your family, and we want God's blessing on our family, and everybody said, amen? amen. And if we want God's blessing on our church, and we all want God's blessing on our church, amen? amen? If we want God's blessing, there are eight things that we need to do, and in the bulletin, I give you the first four things that we talked about last week. I don't have time to go into those today and, re and review, so you can either go online and review those from uh, May 1st, or just look at them right there, and, uh, and, and that's cool, but uh, I wanna give you five, six, seven, and eight of the things that we need to do in order for God to bless our lives, our family, and our church. So number five, if you're, if you're writing this down, please write this down. You know, somebody sent me something this last week, and they said this, if you're holding a pencil or a pen, when somebody's talking, you remember 30% more just by holding that pen or pencil. I don't know why. You remember 30% to 30 more than if you just sit there. So everybody get a pen or a pencil in your hand. You don't even have to take notes, but just hold that. And then they said this. They said it's only like 35 to 40 percent uh, memory retention if you take notes. And so I'm thinking, shoot, don't even bother taking notes. Just hold the pen in your hand, right? And so here we go. Uh, uh, that's really important that we, we remember some of this stuff. And, and, and there may be a point that you just go, man, I got to remember that for this next week. So number five, here we go. In order for us to have God's blessing in our lives and in our church, we must, just like Acts chapter 2, church, the early church, the very first church, we must show love to each other deeply. We must love each other deeply. That's part of the DNA of our church. Growing churches love and loving churches grow. 
Amen, I believe that. Would you please look at the person beside you to decide if you wanna say amen to that or not? Do you see the person beside you? Okay, if you love them, then say amen. Yeah, that's not very good. Okay, yeah, I, I, I get that. Uh, all right, growing churches love, loving churches grow. What do you call it when, church, when Christians love each other? There's a name for that, did you know this? It's called uh, fellowship. And there's a Greek word, it's called koinonia. Koinonia just simply means that we're as committed to each other as we are to Christ. And that's what God wants. He wants us to be committed to each other as we are to him. In the first church, they took care of each other. There was this genuine love that they had for each other. They treated each other just like they were family. In fact, we have this phrase that I use in the membership class. I tell people right from the first. I say, listen, we're not like a, 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 a family. Our church is a family, amen? So I want you to find somebody around you right now, whether you're here in the engaged service or maybe at home, find somebody that you don't know and look at them and say brother or sister and just call them brother or sister right now. Would you do that real quick? You don't have to get up or anything. Just look, find somebody you don't know and just kind of wave at them, say hi and say, hey brother, hey sister. That's cool. And the reason we do that is because we're not like a family, we are a family, that's right. And if you, if, you want to, if you want God's blessing on your life, on your family and your church, then, then you've got to love other Christians. And let me put it in the negative. If you don't do this, if you don't love other Christians, then you're not gonna have God's blessing on your life, isn't that right? Amen. We gotta love each other deeply. We're commanded to do that. Jesus said, listen, I command you to love each other deeply. And Acts chapter two, verse 42, they took part in fellowship, sharing in fellowship meals and praying together. And I love the contemporary English version. Watch this, the contemporary English version says, and just say this out loud with me, let's say it together. They were like family to each other. I love that. Listen, when the first church started 2,000 years ago, they were persecuted and they were ridiculed by, by the Roman government. The Roman government didn't understand what Christians were all about. It was against the law, in other words, to be a Christian. And, and, and so it, it was so important that they loved each other. In fact, if you were a Christian and the Roman government found out that you were a Christian, they had every right to kill you. They thought that the Christians were wackos. But the one thing that they always said about the Christians, you know, it's just an amazing thing about those Christians. They just love each other in, in the greatest way. Amen. Amen. That's an awesome thing. No doubt about it. Christians love each other more than other people, and, and they really do take care of each other. We got each other's back. We defend each other. We love each other. Let me ask you a question. question. Is, is that what Christianity, is that what Christians are known for today? If you ask people, hey, what is a Christian? What is one great question or characteristic of a Christian? Would they say, hey, you know what? It's those Christians. They love. It ought to be. Amen. It ought to be, and we ought to, we ought to be known for our love, not only for each other, but we ought to know, be known for our love for people who are hurting in our community. It's why we support organizations like ICS. They do such an incredible job in ICS of reaching out and helping those people that are hurting that we ought to partner with them and support them. It's why we have, it's why we have under, underwear drive every summer in our church for uh, 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 the Gospel Rescue Mission. They do such a great job of reaching out to people who are homeless, who have nothing, and, and it's one way that we can do something to help. Did you know that twice in the Bible, in the New Testament, it says this, that we ought to greet each other with a holy kiss. Some of you are going, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, really, that's, that's absolutely true, twice. And, and, and they still do that in some parts of the world, but in America we don't. And, and, and you say, well, Craig, why don't we? Well, the tradition started for the first 300 years in churches, the, the, the Christians, it, it, it said in recorded history, it said that they would greet each other. With, if they saw each other in the store, in the grocery store, wherever, in the market, they would greet each other with a holy kiss because the Bible said that, that they loved each other and, and it, wasn't some, it wasn't some carnal kiss or lustful kiss, it was a holy kiss. For 300 years they did that. At about 300 AD, some bishops decided, you know what, that kiss, sometimes it could be lustful. So let's change that around. Only guys can kiss guys, only girls can kiss girls, and within 10 years that tradition was gone, done away with. <laughs> Well, yeah, that cracks me up. I love that. We don't give a holy, you know what we do around here? We have, I watch people, I watch you. We have holy hugs around here. Have you ever seen, have you ever, have you ever come to our church and you're going, 
uh-oh, she's coming over here. He's coming over here. They're gonna hug me. Pastor's right there. Man, there's people, I, I was on the golf course yesterday. We had a golf tournament in our church and, and, and one of the guys, man, we were walking, I was shaking hands and one of the guys, he kind of put his arm around like, hey, don't, and I just grabbed him and I just hugged him real big. Then he just looked like he needed a hug. I love that about our church, that we give holy hugs. Acts chapter two, verse 44. All the believers continued together in close fellowship. And the message paraphrase says, watch this. They lived in wonderful harmony. They lived in wonderful harmony. How did they do that? How did they show love to each other? It wasn't in a big group. Verse 46 says, they met in small groups in homes for communion and shared their meals with great joy and thankfulness. That's great, that's why we believe in small groups. If you flip your notes over to the back side, number six, remember there's eight things, we're already in number six, that's pretty good. Number six, if we want God's blessing on our church and our family and our lives, number six, we must worship with joy. God wants our worship service to be a festival, not a funeral. <laughs> I go one amen. God wants our, our, our worship time to be a, cel- to, uh, for, he wants us to celebrate, not commiserate. The problem is some churches, are j- they're just cold. You just walk in and you can just feel, I'm not talking temperature, I realize we keep our church cold and everybody can say amen to that, right? Okay, I get that. But we ought to have, there ought to be in our worship, it ought to be fun, it ought to, we ought to celebrate, there ought to be a joy. It shouldn't be worshiping out of duty. Come on, you've been in churches that have been so cold, haven't you, that you've seen ushers that wear skates because it's so cold they could skate up and down as they're taking the offering. It's like the first church of the frigid air, right? Come on, I, I've told you this story before. I've heard of a lady that went to a, a church and it was a little bit more formal than our church and at one point she just, she just said, praise the Lord. And everybody kind of looked at her like, what are you doing? And the pastor was preaching and he was preaching from, from the word of God and she got kind of excited. She said, amen and praise the Lord again. And Usher came down and said, ma'am, you're, you're gonna have to be quiet. She goes, I, I just have the joy of the Lord in my heart. And, and he said, well, you didn't get that here. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of worship attracts people to our church? I know the answer to that. Happy worship. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I'll give you my bias. I think church ought to be fun to come to. I think you ought to look forward to coming to church on Sunday. See, Jesus is alive. He paid for my sins. My sins are forgiven. I'm going to heaven when I die. Can I get an amen for that? See, that's cool. That's so much good news, and there's so much bad news in the world. You don't need to come here and hear more bad news. You don't need that. Sometimes I think Sundays are like, anybody ever watch Rocky, the movies? I think, what are they on now? Rocky 10? Do I have any Rocky fans here? And, and in Rocky, you know, he's out there and he's, he's swinging away and he's getting hit, boom, boom, boom. And, and, and he's falling down and, and he gets back up and he gets knocked down again and finally the bell rings and he goes over to the corner, it happens every movie, and he comes over, this guy throws water in his face and he says, hey listen, you're doing good, keep it up, get back out there. And some of you, when you come to church on Sundays, you are just like Rocky, you've been knocked down, you're emotionally drained, and it's like we get spiritual jumper cables, cables and we recharge you. Right? That's the way it ought to be. But worship only recharges you. Hear me on this. Worship only recharges you if you participate. Ooh, now you're stepping on my toes. Listen, if you just stand there and you don't sing and you don't get involved and you, don't, you just kind of stomp your emotions out, That's not gonna help you at all. You've gotta express your emotions. Our emotions are God-given. If you push down, stomp down your emotions, it's like getting a Coke bottle, shaking it up real good. Sometime or another, that thing's gonna blow, amen? So if you, if you don't allow your, 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 your emotions to express, you're, you see, I, I know what happens. You stand there and, and Larry's up here singing or Connor's over there singing engage service and, and you're singing away, you hear everybody else, but you know, you don't want, you don't, you're worried about whatever everybody else is gonna think. Can I just stop just real quick? Hold on. Why are you so worried about everybody else and what they're gonna think if you show some emotions during worship? 
Come on, it'll be all right. Church is meant to renew your emotions on, on a weekly basis and, and for you to get an emotional lift to recharge you, but it's not gonna happen if you don't participate. And I see some of you, sometimes you get moved by a song and and you so want to raise your hand. And I'm not saying today that you're any more uh, 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 spiritual if you raise your hand or don't raise a hand. I'm not saying that. But there's just those times where the song is being sung and there's something inside of you, you want to demonstrate that yes, that's me. And there's something inside of you goes, if I do that, what are they gonna say about me? Maybe Asher's gonna come down, tell me to shut up, stop raising your hand. No, they're not. See, here's the point. How can we get so excited about Steph Curry making a three-point shot from halfway down the court and people are pumping their fists and saying amen. How can we get so excited in hockey about some hockey player putting the biscuit in the basket? You know what that means? How can we get so excited about the Chicago Cubs? Do I have any Cubs fans here? Couple, three, and, and, and somebody hits a home run. Or how, how can we get so excited about Jason Day hitting him a 30 foot putt and everybody gets all excited, but listen, when we come here to worship, we, there's just some taboo thing that we can't get excited about what God's done in my life, that he saved me from my sin, that he saved me from regret and, and guilt, that he brought hope into my life. Can I get excited about that and pump my fist and say, yay God, sure I can, amen? It doesn't mean you're any more spiritual than anybody else. Hear me when I say that. Some of you though, you so want to just express a little emotion to God. And there's that song that we sing and hey, you know what, it talks about God's grace in your life or that song that we sing about how good God is or or that song that we sing, I've decided to follow Jesus and there's just something inside of you that just goes, you know, I don't wanna do too much here but I'd like to kind of raise my hand a little bit. It's okay. Some of you just need to raise your foot a little bit. Just a little. Is it all right for me to raise my hand and and, and in doing so I'm saying, God, that's me, that's my life. I'm celebrating what you're doing in my life. Even if it's, I mean, some people just are all out two hands. I'm not talking to you guys, you guys do great. I'm just talking to the people that are just kind of like, I'm not sure if I can do this. Just, just start off next Sunday when we sing. Just kind of raise, just, if there's something that just speaks to your heart, just kind of go. <laughs> Worship is, is meant to be a celebration. It ought to be fun. Acts chapter two, I love this, verse 46. They continue to worship together in temple courts, praising God. You know what that is? That's the joy of Jesus in your heart. Praising God and enjoying the favor of people. I, I love that. And, 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 and Look at these other verses in, in, in Peter's sermon. Acts chapter two, verse, verse 28, kind of going backwards. You show me the paths that lead to my life and your presence, Jesus, fills me with joy. And then verse 26, going back a little bit further. Because of this, Peter says, my heart will be glad and my words will be joyful and I will live in hope. Folks, listen to me, there are two reasons why people don't know Jesus Christ, why they're not attracted to Jesus. Two reasons, number one, is because they've never met a Christian. Reason number two, they have. (laughs) And they go, you know what, if it's a grumpy, if I have to be grumpy like that person, (laughs) I don't wanna have that spiritual constipation. You know what I mean? Now you're stepping on my toes again. Come on, let's work on that this summer. Let's work on the joy of Jesus. When we're worshiping, let's allow the joy of Jesus to cut us loose from our emotions. Number seven, if you want God's blessing, if you want God's blessing, number seven, I gotta be willing to sacrifice. The first church, the early church, 2,000 years ago, they were famous for their generosity. Some of you are newer to our church, you're not sure about this. Our church is famous for our generosity. In fact, when I get to this point, I thought to myself, you know what, I don't even have to, I don't even have to uh, uh, preach, I don't have to teach on this point. You guys get it. You understand that this, this is about God's done something great in my life, I, he's been generous to me, I could never outpay God, and so I'm gonna be generous to God, I'm gonna be generous to this church, and you guys get this, so let me do this. Would it be all right if I just gave you a scripture, and I gave you an illustration, and we just went on to point number eight, amen? Just say amen, and I'm gonna do that. Yes. 
Okay, there we go. Here's the verse I want to give you. Verse, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 44 and 45. All the believers shared everything with each other. They were generous. They would sell their land, not just money. Watch this. They would sell their land and the things they owned, and then they, they gave that money to anyone who needed it. They were incredibly generous. They gave everything. It was radical. Let me give you the illustration, then we'll move on to point number eight. I spoke two weeks ago, May 1st, and I got up and I said two things. During that Sunday, I said, listen, we're in this capital campaign. We've just been through uh, hearing from God, and we're in this capital campaign, and I asked you, I said, listen, the first uh, two months, May and June, let's make that be the time that we kind of we kind of front load and we kind of give. And, and I said this, I said, listen, if you could give early, please do that. Some of you are just on a fixed income. You can just give uh, on a rate and, and God bless you. That's great. You, you've been so generous too, but some of you can upload, front load that. And in front loading, that would really help us. And I said this, there, here's the second part. I said, uh, uh, if as soon as we get a million dollars in the bank, we're gonna be working on all the details behind the scenes until that point. But as soon as we get a million dollars in the bank, then we're we're gonna build, at the heart of it, is our children's ministry center. A few other things, but that's, that's the main thing. And I told you two weeks ago, I said we already have, and this is such great news, we already have $250,000 already in the bank for this project, amen? People have been so incredibly generous, but I gotta, I, here, here's my testimony, this is so cool. In the last two weeks, you have given, not, not counting the tithes, not, not counting what you give to missions, above that, you have given over 150,000 more dollars, and today, for this project, for this project, not tithes, not given to missions, you have given already four, over $400,000 that we have in the bank for this project, amen? Man, that's awesome. Would you please look at the person beside you and go, man, this is one generous church. It really is. That's incredible. But I've got some other great news. This past Monday, I received a letter from a family from our church that's a part of our church. And they wrote me a letter and they were talking about, hey, listen, we love to be a part of this church. This is such a great church. And they started talking in the first half of the letter. They talked about this being an Acts 2 type of church where we feel like we are, we're, we're talking about being fully surrendered to God and God's doing some incredible things and God's blessing our church. And by halfway through the letter, here's what the letter said. As a result, we have found this church to be a place of hope as we seek to live our lives spirit-filled in accordance with God's will and God's truth. God is accomplishing amazing work in and through this congregation. We're excited to see where God's gonna lead. Our family recently came together for a family meeting and prayerful consideration of how we can best help in the furtherance of the ministry of Oro Valley Church of the Nazarene. God is faithful and God answers prayer. We know that churches have responsibilities, but, it, uh, uh, but we also know that we uh, serve an awesome, powerful God. He is waiting for his people to take dramatic steps of faith. They say some other wonderful things about our congregation, and then they come back and they say, because of God's leading, it is our intent to provide a matching gift where we will match dollar for dollar proceeds received up to a total of $250,000, this match will be applied to all the gifts that are contributed between June 1 and September 1. You say, Craig, what does that mean in English? Well, here it is. Everything given June, July, and August will be matched dollar for dollar. That is, if you give $100, they'll give $100 too. So your $100 will become $200. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of some fun giving, don't you? That's pretty cool how that happens. I, I, I love that. Every dollar is going to be matched in money that's given June, July, and August, and that's going to be an incredible thing. And, 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 and I, I just, we, I shared this letter with the staff, and we got excited at a staff meeting. I shared the letter Tuesday night with our church board meeting and our church leaders. We got excited about it because here, here's what this means. It means, watch this, if, if I say that this hand represents over $400,000 that's already given, that's already in the bank for this project. Remember, we need a million, watch that. And then all of a sudden over here, in June, July, and August, if we can raise $250,000, this family in our church is gonna match dollar for dollar what we give in June, July, and August. They're gonna match that. That could become $500,000. Now watch this. 
I know a little bit of math. Check me on this. $400,000 already in the bank, $500,000 June, July, and August. By September 1, we could have, some of you already done the math, $900,000. We're just, just a hop, skip, and a jump away from a million and getting the building uh, started to be building. We could be grabbing our gold shovels and we could be breaking ground this fall, amen? Man, that is so exciting. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you're thinking to yourself, <sighs> Well, why didn't they just start it back in, in May or something like that, amen? Anybody go for that? I don't know, but you know what? I had to come to the point this week where I just settled it in my heart that you know what? God has a plan and we're along for the ride. Let's trust God and his faithfulness to us because he's been so faithful. Anybody say amen to that? That's awesome. Our church is an incredibly generous, generous church. Let me get to point number eight and then we'll be done. Number eight, if we want God's blessing on our church, our family, and our lives, then the DNA of the church that God blesses is we gotta bring our friends to Jesus. We gotta bring our friends to Jesus. This is the eighth thing that brings the blessing of God. Verse 41, Acts chapter two. Those who accepted his message, talking about Peter's message, were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. <laughs> so here's this church just starting out, the Christian church starting out first day and they have 3,000 members. Isn't that cool? Verse 47. Here it is from the, the message paraphrase. People liked what they saw, so every day their number grew as God added those who were saved. <laughs> I want you to circle that. Leave that up there just for a second. I love that the people liked what they saw. I think that is so powerful. The, you, you know that friend, that neighbor that you have that doesn't know Jesus Christ? Can you think of somebody like that? Come on, you don't even have to raise your hand, just kind of nod your head if you got somebody like that that you know that doesn't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Just kind of nod your head. I don't see anybody nodding their head. Come on, nod your head. You know somebody like that. Yeah, there we go. They know, he, he, listen, you, by the summer's end, you want them. There's something in your heart, I know, that you want them to come to know Jesus Christ by the end of the summer. I'm telling you today, God, is gonna work with you because God wants that friend, that neighbor, to come to know Jesus Christ by the end of the summer. Anybody just have the courage to say amen to that? I, I, I think that is so powerful. You say, Craig, is there a strategy you're thinking of? Well, I, you know, how, how do I reach that friend, that neighbor for Jesus Christ? I love that phrase that's right there. People liked what they saw. And here's the principle I wanna go with in our strategy for reaching your friends and your neighbors for Jesus Christ. Here it is. When people see what they li uh, like what they see, they're gonna listen to what we say. When people uh, like what they see, then people are gonna listen to what we say. But they're not gonna listen to what we say if they don't like what they see. Before, we before people that we love, that, that, that are friends and neighbors that don't know Jesus, before those people trust Jesus, they gotta be able to trust you, right? See, listen, before people wanna know is the Bible credible, they want to look at your life and they want to ask about your life, is your life credible? Are you real? And how do you know that you're real? Well, here's a, here's a real simple thing, is you just love people. Whether, whether you, you like, whatever you like to do, whatever you like to have fun at, listen, whatever, whether it's golf or basketball or whatever it is, whatever you like to do, whether you like to, to sew or basket weaving or how many people love barbecue? Anybody love barbecue? Couple of good barbecuers here? Listen, whatever you like to do this summer, here's the, the church strategy for, for, for getting your friend and your neighbor to come to know Jesus Christ. Whatever it is you like to do, just do those things that you have fun doing and invite somebody to do it with you. I heard that. So I'm gonna say it again, because I think it takes a little while to set it in. Whatever it is you like to do, whatever it is you have fun with, I'm encouraging you, have a lot of fun, do all those things this summer, just invite that friend or neighbor that doesn't know Jesus Christ to do that with you. You're having barbecue in the backyard? Hey listen, we're gonna do barbecue tonight. Why don't you bring your family over? Ooh, I don't know, I, I see it in your eyes. Come on, just do what you love doing and, and invite them to come over. And when people come over 
at some point just say, hey, listen, let me just tell you how my life has changed. Or, 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 or do something like this, just say, you know what? Our church is so great, and, and this summer, I want you to just do what you regularly do, have fun, and as you're having fun, my goal is that you'll just invite a friend uh, with you to do that thing, and j- June, July, and August, and at some point during the conversation, you'll either bring up how Jesus has changed your life, or I'll make it easy on you, just say, hey, listen, my church is so great, I I want you to come and, 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 and just be a part of a, a, a worship service. You know, we just decided uh, 16 months ago that our church was absolutely full. There was no more seats available. We were coming up to January and we said, you know what, we're gonna run into problems. And so we started two new worship services, one at nine and one at 10.30. And, and I love the fact that we're doing these things so that we can get more people into our church. In the 1030 service, not in the engaged service, but here on the main campus, the next service we're gonna have here, it was a few weeks ago, we dedicated a family that had three children. And this, they were such precious children, they were so cool. And, I, and before I dedicated them, I wanted to talk to the family, make sure they knew what they were doing. And I went and I, I visited this couple with the three kids, and, and when I went, I just said, how did you start coming to OVCN? And here's what the person said. The, the, the mother said, well, I was out shopping, and this lady, as we were standing in line to pay for our, our stuff we were shopping for, this lady just turned around, and she started talking to me uh, about life, about things, and then she said, uh, you know, I just love my church, and, and she asked me if I had a home church and I said we haven't found one yet and and she just said why don't you come and and visit our church I know you're gonna love it so we started coming to this church and that's how they found OVCN amen see that how many people love shopping do I have any shoppers here how many let me put it like this how many of you have the spiritual gift of shopping would you raise your hand see I'm just telling you right now listen if you love to shop Shop for Jesus. While you're out shopping, you're standing in line, you're talking to someone, you're looking at clothes, someone comes and stands beside you. You just talk to them about life and then somewhere in the conversation, you bring up, hey listen, you know what? Jesus has changed my life. Or bring up, hey, do you have a home church? Uh, We love our church. And just talk about that to them. This summer, I'm just saying, make it as easy as you can. Keep on doing the things you love to do, the things you have fun doing. Do those things, but as you're doing them, invite somebody that's unchurched, that that doesn't know about Jesus Christ. Have have them come with you. There's this great verse in the Bible. You've heard pastors preach it uh, a lot. It says this, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, God's agenda, and all these things will be added unto you. If you put, here's what that verse is saying. If you put God's agenda first, then God's gonna turn around. He's gonna bless you in every other area of your life. You say, well, Craig, what's God's agenda? God's agenda, number one. Number one on God's agenda is to get lost people saved through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Come on, that's not hard. That's real simple. That's, that's the number one agenda. And if we join God on God's agenda on that, he's gonna bless our lives. I, I, I think that is so powerful. Let me give you this last verse on your notes. It's Acts chapter one, verse eight. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He says, you're to take the message and you're to share it with people that don't know about Jesus. And we're just saying this summer, do the fun things you wanna do. Have that great time, but as you're doing it, invite an unchurched person to come and do it with you. If you want God's blessing on your family, if you want God's blessing on your life, and if you want God's blessing on our church, these are the eight things that we need to do. Let me close with this story, and we'll be done. 100 years ago, there was this band of brave souls who were known as one-way missionaries. Say, Craig, I've never heard of these one-way missionaries. What is it? It's, it's missionaries that went out and bought a ticket to go to the mission field, but they bought a one-way ticket. They didn't ever think that they were ever gonna return. And so they bought, 100 years ago, this whole band of believers bought one-way tickets to go to the mission field. And as they were sailing away, they, they were waving goodbye to the people that they loved, knowing that they were never gonna see them again waving goodbye to all the things that they thought were so cool in, this, in, in their world that they grew up in, and they knew that they would never return. They were one-way missionaries. 
One of these one-way missionaries was a guy by the name A.W. Milne. And, and he was one of these one-way missionaries and he set sail for an island in the South Pacific and he was headed for an island where they were known to be headhunters on that island and they martyred every missionary that had gone to that island before him. He knew his chances were not very good to live. And so here he is, this one-way missionary, A.W. Milne, <laughs> set sail. And the one thing about him people noticed is that he never feared for his life because he'd already died to his life. He'd already said, listen, my life is done. I am coming alive through Jesus Christ. He said, I am surrendered totally to what God wants in my life. Whatever God wants, that's what I'm gonna do. For 35 years, he lived among this tribe. And when he died, they buried him in the middle of the village and inscribed on his, on his tombstone were these words. When he came, there was no light. And when he died, there was no darkness. When he came, <laughs> there was no light. But when he died, there is no darkness. We have been called to tell people the good news of what God has done in our life, amen? And it's gonna mean that for some of you, you'll have to step out of your comfort zone and you'll have to say, God, I'm surrendered 100% to you. I'm gonna follow you and your will. And where you follow, I'm gonna go. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Would you just simply say that in your heart right now? Not out loud, but just in your heart. Just say, God, you know, really to me, <laughs> I'm dead to myself. I'm alive in you, Jesus. Just like Paul said, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. And you come alive in Jesus Christ and, and you just say, Jesus, from this point on, I wanna be fully surrendered to you 100%. Whatever it is you're calling me to do, doesn't mean I'm gonna be perfect. I'm still gonna make mistakes, but it, it means that the direction of my heart is God, I wanna, I wanna be sold out to you. Whatever you want to do in my life, I wanna follow you. And I promise you, when you come to that decision in your life where you put God's agenda ahead of your agenda, God will bless the socks out of your life, off of your family, and off of this church because we have decided that we're following God with 100% of our lives. One-way missionaries, totally sold out. God, whatever it is you want, wherever you lead, that's where we're going. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ before and you today just sense that you know that's something that you wanna do, that, that that's a step of faith that you like to take, then maybe this morning you would just say yes to Jesus and you would say, Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sins and the best I know how, Jesus, I, I got so many questions and so many doubts, but today, Jesus, I wanna follow you. Would you just simply say yes to Jesus in your heart? You don't have to say it out loud. Jesus, forgive me of my sins and from this point on, I wanna follow you. And if that's you today, just say yes to him. Thank you, Jesus. Do a great work in our church. May this summer be a summer where we see many of our friends and our neighbors come to know you as their Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray these things and all God's people said, amen. How many of you notice we flipped the schedule around just a little bit today? Anybody notice that? What in the world are you doing? We wanted to show you a video. And we have this video of our graduates that we want to show you. There's so much more that's going to go on tonight. I hope you'll come back at 6 o'clock. Now, for you who are type A personalities, you're going, hey, listen, the church is, service is done. I'm out of here. I'm going. Stay in your seats. We will have ushers seat you if we need to. <laughs> no, that's not true. We won't do that. I, I, I'm joking. But if you could, for a minute and a half, stay in your seats. <laughs> Anybody notice we didn't take the offering? <laughs> About halfway through the sermon, we did it on purpose, halfway through the sermon, my ushers start standing up with the offering plates and I'm going, they're expecting. So ushers, come on down. We'll take the offering. You watch the video for a minute and a half and then I'll come back up and I'll dismiss everybody in just a moment. God bless you. Face to face with the young
chapter 3, here's the verse that we're going to close with. For this reason I kneel before the Father, for whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner uh, being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. Thank you for staying.